G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Today I'm gonna to be unboxing my kid's waterproof camera. If you've been on my Instagram, you might know this as Lyji's mini cam. <laughs> I've referred to it a million times as uh, the mini camera. This is a camera that Steve and I bought our nephew Elijah for Christmas. I just thought he might enjoy it. He is very creative. He likes to draw and color, but he also likes to play and just do tons of different things. He's seven now, so he's getting very curious and creative and playful. And so I just love it. And I love to encourage that in him. So for Christmas, we got him this little camera thinking because it was waterproof, it would be pretty durable since we were going on a beach holiday to Southwest Rocks. Maybe he'd want to take photos at the beach. I don't really know. I just kind of thought it'd be nice, especially Steve being a photographer. Seems like a bit of a no brainer gift to give to your nieces and nephews at some point, right? So all of that to say, this is not sponsored, but we had an absolute blast with that mini cam. Here's a photo right out of the, the screen, like literally not edited, not anything. Um, it was on a pretty low resolution. I did up the resolution after that, but honestly, I don't see much of a difference when you do that. Here's straight out of camera footage for video recording. Just note here, right at the end, it pauses and then you've got a still frame right there and then it doesn't show the rest of the video. That is something that happens when you transfer the files over to your computer. Don't know why it happens. I thought it might've just been Elijah's camera. Seems to be a pretty common thing. So those are just some things to note. It's actually not the best camera in the world. That's a really great thing for a reason. Hopefully I'll get to later <laughs> in the video. Um, but for all intents and purposes, it was a great durable little tiny thing that you could throw in your pocket, bring anywhere with you, leave around the house, throw into the pool and you were always just going to have the opportunity to, you know, quickly turn it on and snap a photo or take a little bit of footage. If you've been on my Instagram, you might've seen a whole little clip show that I put together on a little retro mini TV. That was all footage taken from one of these little cameras. They do run on Amazon from, I've seen them as cheap as $25 up to $40. I think right now today they're at $37. You know, Amazon just kind of price differently throughout the year. So I'd always recommend waiting for a deal or something. If you're curious, I'll put the link to the ones that I purchased in the description box. Again, I'm not sponsored, but I want to give you this specific link because there are a ton of different brands that all look like the same camera. And I actually don't know if they are. I think they might just be like something that a lot of companies private label. And so the one that I got is called a go go but there are tons of different versions of them. So I'm going to give you the, the link to the one that I've got just so that you know that my review comes from that specific company's version. Although I do think they're all kind of the same. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that was my little unboxing. All of this to say, Elijah's little blue mini camera, we loved so much that when I came back, I thought, you know what, this would be really great for me to have for the same purpose, just to kind of throw about. It's a little piece of my collection that I think is going to enhance that experience of, you know, documenting my life and art journaling, right? I love using photos in my art journaling, but I also just love documenting my life now. I've found a real passion for that over the past few years, especially with my five-year journal. And so photos are a really integral part of that because a lot of what I can't capture in, you know, writing, I hope that a photo will kind of illustrate. So I like to put a lot of photos into my journaling also because it's just visual. It's just a visual payoff, right? There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of interest to having lots of imagery in your journaling. And I certainly rely on that. I'm a very visual person and I would always go back to my journals to look through them and just glance at all the photos and be inspired by colors and events and photos and everything. But I rarely go back and read anything. The only thing I kind of read again are the five year journal entries. And that's just curiosity. I'm just curious to see how I'm reliving the same day sometimes. Um, but yeah, for the most part, photography has kind of always been a thing that I've enjoyed. Um, I'm not a professional photographer, my husband is. And so that's something that I've gotten to enjoy with him in a new way, because I get to do kind of all the things I love about photography, but I don't have to be in charge of the stuff that I don't, which maybe I'll get to that in a second too. Here I'm on Lightroom. I was just putting a quick preset on uh, on the photos. I created a preset from my summer trip and I actually really love it. It kind of makes it look like a bit of a nostalgic kind of film effect. The quality of the photo isn't that great and the video, right? So that is actually kind of working to my benefit because with that little film kind of preset and especially with the date, the date number still on there, I feel like they just remind me of the photos that I used to go and wait in line for 
uh, you know, I would go and give the, the role of Kodak to the camera people and then the next day I'd go back to the store and collect the photos with my auntie. So they're just giving me all kinds of feelings of nostalgia. But also, it's kind of on trend right now to be a little bit 8-bit, a little bit early 90s, late 90s, Y2K is coming back into uh, fashion trends. So I feel like, you know, photography also kind of fluctuates through trends as well. If you remember the Vaseline on the lens kind of 80s glam shot photography, right? So that kind of Y2K thing, I'm, I'm just enjoying the trendiness of it. And I think this photo kind of, this camera captures that without having to do a whole bunch of steps. I'll also say the camera itself being such low quality, low resolution, I mean, it's enough, but it's it's really not that great. Um, <laughs> because it is, I actually don't stress about trying to create perfect shots. I don't sit there and think, oh, you know, what's in focus? And, you know, how am I, how am I going to frame this to make sure that... But it, honestly, I'm just pulling the camera out, pointing it at it, and just clicking it. Because it, it gets what it gets. Some of them just aren't going to work, but that, I remember that being a part of the you know, package deal of when we would go and get those prints from the store, sometimes I'd get them back and I'd think, oh no, they didn't all work. I specifically remember actually doing that with an underwater camera on a cruise ship I went on at 11 years old. I got all the photos back and none of them were in focus. It was just kind of like blue prints, blue six by sixes, and I was quite devastated. But I kind of like this. It is digital, so you can go and delete stuff if you want to. You do have that added benefit, but it's kind of nostalgic and I just really enjoy it. So that's kind of it on the on the mini camera front. Like I said, it's, it's kind of low energy, low effort. Uh, it's a little bit freeing to not have to worry too much about what the camera is going to do. Like how to, when you have so much control over the camera, right? Like even in your iPhones and stuff, when you can literally set the focal length and when you can change the exposure and when you can start to do all these things that manipulate it, even down to putting, you know, presets on, putting little filters on, sometimes all of that choice can actually be overwhelming. This, you don't get to choose a lot. So there's, you're kind of getting rid of all of that overwhelming feeling. And then at the end, if you want to try and do something with it, you absolutely have the freedom to, like I did in Photoshop, like, like I did in Lightroom rather. I put my little preset on there because I've made that, I like that. It makes the colors feel a little bit more filmy to me. And that's where uh, I make that decision. But I feel like it takes out all of the extra pressure to have to figure it all out up front, which is something that, you know, maybe not a lot of people think about, but every time we're doing those photo shoots with Steve, like every time I'm helping him with photo shoots, that's all we kind of think about up front. It's like, where's the focus? What's the light doing? How do we want to manipulate this? How do we want to make that? You know what I mean? There's so much that goes into that. This is very naive, very childlike, very intuitive, kind of primitive. So <laughs> not totally, right? But you get what I mean. Kind of take all that extra pressure off. So I've enjoyed it immensely. I printed all of this out on uh, glossy label paper from onlinelabels.com. Sometimes I leave a little white border because against the cream paper it looks really nice. Um, and then other times I just cut it down to size. All different sizes. I've kind of got a file on my computer that shows me the size of the page so I can size them all to fit. Um, I've been through sizing stuff before on YouTube so we don't need to go there. But I decided to date the front just so I could get a, a good uh, like start to finish when the journal actually was. Uh, sometimes I don't do that and then I regret it because I don't know what year something happened in. I did put a little bit of journaling uh, flourish on this page with my wristband and my little Mickey stickers. And I also wanted to write. I wanted to journal in here because there was some blank space that I felt like would be better suited to sharing some of the thoughts that were running through my head. I don't know if that's always going to happen, but I try not to restrict myself if I get the urge to do something because I always kind of think first thought, best thought, you know, like run with it. If you're feeling the urge, go catch the creative frenzy, right? So just just do it. Um, you know, it doesn't always work out. Like the stamping on these pages, I don't think looks very neat. <laughs> so it was kind of irritating because I thought, oh, I kind of just ruined my neat aesthetic just for no reason. But at the same time, I don't get down on myself for it. I had the urge to do it. I may not do that again. Maybe I will. Maybe I wouldn't care next time. But for all intents and purposes, I have started my photo journal and that's what I wanted to do today. So thank you for watching the unboxing with me. I know we kind of got off topic and kind of talked mostly about that, but this video is for my new photo journal that I've started. It's a traveler's notebook, half size insert. So it's only 32 pages, not the regular 64, I believe it is. And it is uh, from the traveler's company. I got it in Japan a couple of years ago for 200 yen. And I'm very, very excited to keep going with this. Just a very simple journal, but I love photos so much. And I always want to print more and print them in bigger sizes, so I'm dedicating this entire journal to just that. 
just being a photo journal. Thanks for joining me. I'll speak to you another time soon. Until then, bye.